baby was born premature, addicted to drugs, and abandoned for months. Two years ago, Liz Smith, director of nursing at Franciscan Children's Hospital in Brighton, Massachusetts, was headed toward the elevator at work when she saw her. A tiny girl with bright blue eyes and a single soft brown curl swept across her forehead. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. Who's this beautiful angel? Smith asked the nurse who was wheeling the infant down the hall. Her name is Giselle, the nurse told her. Giselle was transferred to Franciscan in October 2016, but Smith didn't meet her until March the next year when she switched units within the hospital. Her parents had a few supervised visits, but no one else came. Smith learned that Giselle, then 8 months old, was born prematurely at just 29 weeks, weighing 1 pound 14 ounces. She was born with Neonatal Abstinence Syndrome, or NAS, a consequence of being exposed to narcotics during the pregnancy. Giselle was immediately weaned off of the drugs, but faced additional complications from her prematurity in addition to the exposure. After spending almost three months in the NICU on ventilator support, she developed an oral aversion. This reluctance to eat is common in premature babies who have never experienced pleasure from feeding. Needing continued care for her complex medical needs, Giselle was transferred to Franciscan Children's. Liz instantly bonded with Giselle and visited her frequently through all her complications and setbacks. I went to see her every day, she said. It was kind of my reward after a long work day. The state claimed custody of Giselle in October 2016, shortly after her arrival at Franciscan Children's. Giselle's birth parents were facing an uphill battle of addiction and were not fit to care for a child. Given that Giselle's neurological prognosis was uncertain and there were delays in developmental milestones, it was clear that Giselle needed to experience life outside the hospital to thrive. Social service workers were trying to place her in foster care. Giselle, Smith told herself all the way home that evening. Giselle. It was at that moment, said Smith, that she knew, I'm going to foster this baby. I'm going to be her mother. Life often interferes with well-planned intentions, and for Smith, who grew up in Andover, Massachusetts, it was no different. When she lost her mother at age 19 to liver cancer, Smith decided the best way to honor her was to live a good life and follow her selfless example. My mom was a pediatric nurse who always put others first, recalled Smith, a middle-class child with two brothers and two sisters. So, I grew up wanting to be a nurse too. She also wanted to nurture in a more personal way. For decades, Smith, now 45, always thought she would marry and raise a family as her mother had. After her parents divorced when she was nine, her mom put a lot of effort into keeping the house full of laughter and joy, Smith recalled. When several of her siblings married and started to have children of their own, Smith said she naturally thought that she would one day do the same. But it didn't happen. I never imagined becoming a mom would be a challenge, she said. It's a desire you can try to push away and fill with other distractions, but it never goes away. As Smith threw herself into being the world's greatest aunt for her 13 nieces and nephews, her siblings picked up on her pain. I always pictured Liz as a mom, since she's a nurturer by nature, said one of her sisters, Ellie Smith, 40, a homeland security analyst with three boys. Liz Smith, who had hoped to conceive through in vitro fertilization, found out her health insurance wouldn't cover the treatment. Not only could she not afford it on her own, but she was also not a good candidate for IVF. Smith said in hindsight she can't believe she was so upset about possibly not being able to get pregnant. Her sisters suggested adoption or fostering, but Smith didn't want to consider it. Then she saw Giselle. Since the moment I met her, there was something behind her striking blue eyes capturing my attention, she said. I felt that I needed to love this child and keep her safe. After putting in a request to foster Giselle, Smith continued her regular visits to the baby's hospital room every day after work to sit next to her crib and talk in a soft voice. She was behind developmentally, and I wanted to get her out of the hospital and get her thriving, Smith recalled. Three weeks later, in April 2017, when Giselle was nine months old, she received permission to take Giselle home with the stipulation that every effort would be made by the state to reunite the infant with her birth parents. Her friends at work threw her a baby shower and helped to set up a crib in her bedroom. Leaving the parking lot of the hospital with Giselle and a car full of baby stuff, I was in shock that it was happening, said Smith. She took two weeks off to settle into her new role. 
I was excited but nervous, realizing that I was committing everything I had to this child who might not be in my life forever, she said. When Liz first began fostering Giselle, the goal was reunification with her birth parents. This meant that Giselle's birth parents had weekly visits with her, supervised by the Department of Children and Family Services. The end goal was to reunite her with her family. Gradually, the visits decreased, and a few months into fostering, the goal changed to adoption due to the lack of bonding and progression in the parents' efforts. I remember certain nights, one in particular, when she was hooked up to the feed and I was walking by the mirror and the thought went into my head of losing her, explained Liz. I had to go there in my mind because it was still a reality, but it made me sick to my stomach. You can't just love a certain percentage, you have to give it your all. When Giselle's birth parents did not appeal their rights being terminated and no biological relatives were fit to adopt her, it became clear that Liz's life was about to change dramatically. When I got the call that the parents' rights were terminated, I imagined that it would be a day of relief, said Liz, and it was a day I was really sad. I was really happy, but I was really sad for them. I was gaining her, but they were losing her. And to try to battle addiction and being a mom, that's impossible. I was excited but nervous, realizing that I was committing everything I had to this child who might not be in my life forever, she said. Sometimes, the visits were upsetting to Giselle, according to Smith. There is no bond between Giselle and her parents, though they genuinely believed they could care for her. Eventually, they disengaged and their connection faded away. I don't think they realized what her medical needs required. Although Giselle's birth parents were initially granted supervised weekly visits, ultimately, the state determined that they were incapable of caring for the infant, and their parental rights were terminated. Smith sought adoption while the state searched for a possible parent within the toddler's extended family. My nephew asked me, what if we lose Giselle? She's a part of our family, Smith tells Yahoo Lifestyle. No other family members were found who were able to take the baby. Smith was thrilled that she could apply to adopt Giselle, but she understood the sorrow of the situation for the birth mother and father. The day I got the call that their parental rights were terminated was very sad, she said. My gain was another's loss. I was really happy, but I was really sad for them. I was gaining her, but they were losing her. It's a feeling difficult to describe when you are experiencing this life-changing moment that someone else's as well in the opposite way. The bottom line is, it's devastating for another family. With plenty of nurturing from Smith, her brother, Phil Smith, who lived with her at the time, and other trusted caregivers, the infant was soon meeting milestone after milestone. By Halloween of 2017, when Giselle was 15 months old, she was walking, and she knew several words. Her first word was badoon, for balloon, said Liz Smith. Today, we still call it that. On October 18, 2018, coincidentally, Liz's grandmother's birthday, her family gathered in the Brockton courthouse to finalize the adoption. The courtroom was filled with family members, co-workers, and friends. Liz Smith's dream became official. A judge signed off on Giselle's adoption and presented Liz Smith with legal documents certifying that she was now the girl's mother. The judge stood up and said, When a judge walks in the room, everyone stands out of respect. But today, I stand in respect for you, Liz, because you deserve the respect from this room. A birthing day is a miracle, but adopting a child from miles away is destiny. That's what brought you two together. It wasn't until the judge actually read her name aloud as Giselle Catherine Smith and called her mom that she felt her dream of becoming a mom had come true. Smith's brother, Phil Smith, 44, told the Washington Post, This is the mother-daughter relationship my sister has waited a long time for. It's plain to see that they have brought completeness to each other. Giselle attends daycare three times a week, and in April, she's entering preschool. Giselle is totally caught up with her milestones, and she's off the charts socially, Smith tells Yahoo Lifestyle. From being immobile in a crib at eight months old to where she is now is unthinkable. Although Giselle, who is now two, still needs to use a supplemental feeding tube, said Liz Smith, her daughter now weighs 23 pounds and has an appreciation for cheese, avocados, and pizza. She is also energetic, loving, and often bursts spontaneously into song. Her new favorite song is You Are My Sunshine, said Smith, and every time she sings it, I think to myself, you have no idea. 
Since Liz and Giselle first met, Giselle has made tremendous medical strides. She still receives most of her nutrition from her feeding tube, but she has also started eating by mouth. She's developed a taste for pizza and avocados recently. If you told me a year ago she would be asking for pizza, I would not have believed you, said Liz. She's doing remarkable. It's just a slow progression, but in the right direction. Their journey to becoming a family was not an easy one. They faced some incredible medical and legal challenges along the way, but thanks to Franciscan Children's, Liz and Giselle have found each other and built a family. If you enjoyed the video, kindly give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section, and share with others. Thanks for watching, and catch you in the next one.